Right, I don't want to do it like Robbie G's one because Robbie G's one was really, really bad. So I'm going to do my own one. Get your t-shirt. Support the cause. No joke. Hashtag. Wicked. Yeah. Do I have to give this one back or can I keep it? Because I haven't got 17 at the moment. They're so good together, whatever the weather. I dare you to find someone better. I bet that you could never. Facebook and YouTube, they're coming through. Weekly topics on the news, Sundays, one to two. And you can chime in if you've got something to say from the three best comedians in the Now, people who want a warning, George Floyd didn't get a warning. When it was on the news and we were watching people thinking, are they going to edit this? Are they going to blur out his face? They didn't. They pushed and pushed and pushed. They showed the program. They didn't give us a warning for the N-word. You don't want a warning. So if you're going to watch a show, you know what happened. This is a good time to sit down and talk to your children and go, the world has changed. We're speaking to them about the virus right now. Now we're speaking to them about protests because the world has changed. And guess what? We've got to get used to it. When it comes to real talk, they're all my first pick. You heard it. They're so good together, whatever the weather. I dare you to find someone better. I bet that you could never. Facebook and YouTube, they're coming through. Weekly topics on the news, Sundays, one to two. And you can chime in if you've got something to say. From the three best comedians in the UK They've all got knowledge by the boatload They shake it up and make it nice like a snow globe Not in your postcode, they still feel a stone's throw Bringing us together Hashtag no jokes Hashtag no jokes Hashtag no Hashtag no jokes Hashtag no jokes Sicker than your average podcast Sicker than your average podcast Sicker Sicker than your average podcast. You said from the beginning you had seven matches, seven masks, seven names. What was the message you wanted to send now? Um, well, what was the message that you got? That's more of the question. <laughs> Code, they still feel a stone's throw, bringing us together. Hashtag no jokes. 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 Sicker than your average podcast. Sicker than your average podcast. Sicker 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 than your average podcast. Trying to reach the levels, but this one is top class. Eddie Nesta, I told you he's the best. Angie Lamar, they'll go far because she's a superstar. And Curtis, he's worshipped a wordsmith. When it comes to real talk, they're all my first. Pick. I think what diversity so did on Saturday Night Britain's Got Talent, Britain's talent was awesome. It was powerful. I mean, I sat at just emotional, just thinking, look what they have told, the story that they have told in dance from the heart. It was so powerful. They shake it up and make it nice like a snow globe. Not in your postcode, they still feel a stone's throw. Bringing us together. Hashtag no jokes. Hashtag no jokes. Hashtag no jokes. Hashtag, Hashtag no jokes. Hashtag no jokes. Hashtag sicker no than your average podcast. Sicker than your average podcast. Sicker. Sicker. Sicker than your average podcast. Trying to reach the levels, but this one is top class. Eddie Nesta, I told you he's the best. Angie Lamar, they'll go far because she's a superstar. And Curtis, he's worshipped a wordsmith. When it comes to real talk, they're all my first pick. You heard it. They're so good together, whatever the weather. I dare you to find someone better. I bet that you could never. Facebook and YouTube, they're coming through. Weekly topics on the news, Sundays, one to two. And you can chime in if you've got something to say from the three best comedians in the UK. And a big shout out to Donna well. Spence. Yeah, she did brilliant. Well done, Donna Spence. Well done, Donna. Well done, Donna. Well done. Well done. We salute you. Hashtag no jokes. 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 Sicker than your average podcast. Sicker than your average podcast. Sicker. Sicker. Sicker than your average podcast Trying to reach the levels But this one is top class Eddie Nesta I told you he's the best Angie Lamar They'll go far Because she's a superstar And Curtis He's worshipped a wordsmith When it comes to real talk They're all my first pick You heard They're so good together Whatever the weather I need to find someone Good afternoon. Hopefully you've had an absolutely brilliant week. It's great to be back for the third of six uh, in hashtag no joke. Myself, Angie and Curtis um, going through the week's 
stories, creating some stories, making trouble, agitating, irritating, and hopefully entertaining as well. Thanks so much. Please spread. Please get involved. It's really important that you get involved. Have the comments, have conversations, use it as a networking platform. Go for it, honestly. A uh, couple of things I want to say. <sighs> I hate it, you know, I hate it when it goes like this. Uh, for so long when we started this, people said, just start a GoFundMe pages, and you know I'm allergic to those. But we have arrived at the target uh, of £2,000, and the reason that we did that was because literally there are people editing, there are people posting, um, and nobody's getting money as such, but, you know, just to get it going, just to keep it going so that Curtis can feed his dog and, you know, Angie could pay the excess for her mum's baggage to get away from her. I, I mean, it just literally basics that that we were taking money for. So thank you very much. T-shirt still. You can find it all in the link. Please go there. Uh, looking forward very much this week, actually. It's uh, one of those weeks um, on the show. Uh, is a second wave coming? What's your confidence like in the government? And the government have said, £10,000 fine if you're not listening and self-isolating or when that track and trace things come finding it. Uh, you've also got Ofcom refusing to even countenance that anything was done wrong in relevance to diversity in that dance. So that, that they didn't even investigate. Uh, but it's still something wrong, isn't it, when 20... 1,600 people complain about something, so we want to hear uh, your views on that. Why are so many people sending me Jim Davison videos? We'll, we'll talk about that. And um, a video that's been sent to myself, Angie, and Curtis more than any other uh, is about two guys who were about to be evicted from the market. Uh, and Wagwan with that story. Uh, we've got a special guest to help us identify exactly what's going on. So that's enough for me. Time to introduce the stars of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the one and the only Angie Lamont. Hi, Angie. <laughs> hey. Do you shop it on a Friday? Come I on said, now. It's funny, you know, how things that people say over the years just stick in your head. And I was thinking That's the other right. day, because we haven't really talked enough about Choice FM, and maybe we'll do it next week, because it kind of... Yeah. Bought on the big fellas, didn't we? Um, Ernie and Daddy also, Ernie. yeah, Daddy Ernie, Martin and, Jay. And also Martin J. Uh, we didn't really give it enough time because it, it meant a lot to us, and I promise we'll Absolutely. do that next week. We're busy this week, very busy, Angie. Busy, I've busy got in the, the city. and the whistle. Don't make me take off my shoes this week, Angie. And the bad boy, I know you're not talking to me, you're talking to him. him. So you must come in the room there. A man that should have got beat when he... he... <laughs> Kurt, I've got you this week, mate. I've got you. Yeah? Thank you. Where's, that, where's hey, Angie's yeah, no joke t-shirt? Who are you asking yeah, me you or Angie? Angie? You. You, because you got it. Hello. Have you yeah, not yeah, even to arrange it? like Angie don't want to meet oh, me at all. That's a lie from the pit I'm of hell. i tried to arrange dropping it off. Look, it's hanging up there. Do you see it? <laughs> All right, send, no. send me your address. Send me your address. I'm coming this afternoon. Okay, look, look, look. Please comment, like, everything. Get involved. Uh, this is a conversation that started through COVID. As I said, a GoFundMe page was to just keep the thing going and also the T-shirts. Uh, we get a little change from the T-shirt. Loads of people. It was great, wasn't it, to see all those people wearing the T-shirts? Oh, thank that was you. so fantastic. To, to, to see all those people. But thank you. They're still on sale. You can find all of that uh, in the um, bio. Okay. Eddie, so Eddie yeah. can I just say something? Well done on Jeremy Vine the other day. You look really sharp in your blue suit, looking look so smart. <laughs> you look great. You me I was getting ready for Christmas. With the no. beard. <laughs> you look great. I see you handling Lowy. I saw you look at her like... Oh, go on, my girl. I saw that look. Yeah, I we'll get to that. That diversity <laughs> story. You look at my look at the twit, look at my Twitter feed, and you see how many people got upset with me for you know the comment "shut up and dance." That's what they want us to do. They don't want people to talk. They want us to shut up and dance. So, so that mm -hmm. that will come up. Let Let's start with the newest one, shall we? So, here it goes. This week. We have had the rule of six, we've had the law of six, we've had everything. And literally just before we came to air today, 
uh, the Secretary of State. And I've got to say, this guy is not well liked in some of the groups I'm in. Uh, they call him the single worst Secretary of State in the history of Secretary of States. He was the guy who came up with the idea of diversity of thought. He was the guy who said we put a protective arm around the care system. And he was the guy when uh, asked by Kate Burley about the former leader of Australia being a misogynist, uh, said yes, but he's very good at his job. Now, it isn't my opinion, but that's what some people think of Matt Hancock. He is the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. He's in charge of our safety. And here is what he said today about the latest developments. The nation faces a, a tipping point and we have a choice. And the choice is either that everybody follows the rules, the rule of six and the need to self-isolate if you have a positive test or if you're contacted by NHS test and trace, or we will have to take more measures and I don't want to uh, see uh, more measures, more restrictive measures. Uh, but unfortunately, if people don't follow the rules, that's how the virus spreads. And we know so much more about the virus and how it spreads uh, now than we did last time. And we can see what people need to do. And that's why we have these super simple rules, the, su the rule of six. And then if you've got a positive test, or if you've been a contact of somebody who's a positive test, you must self-isolate. And we're bringing in this stronger, uh, this stronger uh, rules around that self-isolation with the support for people who need to self-isolate so that everybody must do it. So that support is a £10,000 fine. Let's get to discussing this, shall we? Because it's really important, as I say, you at home, we could talk about all sorts of things, but it is the very reason we're here, Angie. It's the very reason that we're together. It's the backdrop. It's what cancelled 2020. I got a sense from the Secretary of State there that if this does go wrong and there is a second wave and we do have a second lockdown, it's Angie Lamar, Curtis Walker and Eddie Nestor's fault. That he's yeah. now not taking responsibility, he's put it onto the general public. What do you think, Angie? Uh, you know, I think a very confusing message is coming from the government right now. And even when he speaks, I just get confused even more. I don't understand why we don't just isolate for two weeks and just shut everything down, rather than trying to work out what it is six people can come into your house but yet if you go out to a, a restaurant you can all sit together you can go out to the park and be amongst each other not isolating no one's really isolating no one's really following the rules and to find people ten thousand pounds first of all you've got to find the people and if you do find the people why don't you just test them why don't we get that testing thing sorted out because you know what they've given it all to private companies to run this has not been run by the NHS. This is all people's friends handling the situation and they're making a mess of it and they're trying to blame us and make us feel like we're not doing the right thing. People are trying to do the right thing, but the leadership is poor. I think lock down mm -hmm. for two weeks, sit down for 14 days and see what happens after that. I think it's what was interesting to me because I'm sad. Obviously, I do it for a living and I watched Baroness Dido this week. She's the woman formerly of Talk Talk who had the responsibility of, track and trace, test and trace, which is what Angie's talking about. Everybody accepts that you can't really beat the virus unless you understand where it comes from, who people mm. mix with. That's not in place here. And she said, we underestimated, or words to the effect of, we underestimated how many people would be looking for a test. I thought that was extraordinary. How do you feel, Kurt? I feel it's, it's a government that has been confused from the onset of this. As Andy said, there's poor leadership. Now they blame, remember two weeks ago they were blaming young people. Now they've moved it to a rule of six. It's our fault if you catch the disease because of what? Because you gave us leadership? Because you showed us how to do it? You didn't. So everybody, there was one point it was left to common sense. Now look at the three of us here. I'm the only one in this conversation with common sense. Do you know what I mean? And that is society. You, you've left it up to us, and now you're going to blame us if it, if it goes wrong. I just find it so appalling that these people are picking up big wages for, for doing foolishness and not understanding what the role is. They were following the science at one point. Then they were leading the scientists. Then they were ignoring the scientists. Then they were following the science again. You know, it's a mockery, and we know that everybody's feeling it, this £10,000 fine, 
is, I don't know where it's going to go, but I know everybody's feeling the, the financial pinch right now. If you look at car drivers now are being brutalized for just moving their car from one point to another point in the way they've locked down the roads throughout London anyway. And it's just a money-making thing. So if somebody said to me, I can earn 10 grand if I catch you messing about for the local council, I'd be watching everybody. I'd be dis distributing 10 grand fines all over the place. It is just a mockery. And it saddens me that we've, I don't know about elected these people. One minute they're head of education, next minute they're head of health, and without any training, no qualification, they just jump from job to job to job as it suits them. And if me and you wanted to start flying planes tomorrow, I'm sure we would have to get some the form planes. of training. That's right. Yeah, but that's why they're supposed to rely on the civil service. And that's why it worried me when people like Dominic Cummins and Pretty Patel made enemies of the civil service. You do not make enemies of the civil service they because they are the, they're running the country in, in all they, respects, they run, aren't they? They are the guys that are always there, always doing it. You're just do. a suit. You're just a face in another suit. These that's people right. are doing it all the time. That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, the, the reason that, just one more, the reason that this worries me is because I don't believe in common sense because what common sense means to you means something different to me. And the thing is that people are dying. We've got 45,000 people dead. They're talking about a second wave. We already know, I think, in my youngest uh, in his class, he's six. There were six kids off. A mate of mine said there were 66 children in the total school off. We did hear, didn't we, that it would be difficult to have pubs and schools open at the same time. And well, they were planning. They were planning a second, a second wave from July. Well, no, from people July. Like it feels like everybody July. has to get this thing, and I think that's what they were aiming for. Everybody from has to July, catch it. From July, they were telling us there's a lockdown. At the beginning of this, they were telling us that we're going to be about forty thousand people who are going to die. They herd, predicted. Herd, herd they, immunity. They predicted herd that. Immunity, yeah. They knew what incompetence will allow to happen, and it happened. Then they told us that we're going to have a, um, a second wave. They've been conditioning us for a second wave since June, Ju from July. So now it's here. They were told, don't send the kids to school. They were told, um, don't have the big parties and do all those things. At the time when they had the big parties and all those things that were happening, there was no second wave. Nothing happened. And yeah. so there's been a big time, there's been a big gap. And all of a sudden, we're getting ready for a second wave just because, what, the kids have gone to school. Right. I but think that... Yeah, but Angie, I need your help because because one of the executives. I'm, I'm trying to help you. Yeah, 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 but 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 you're illustrating you're illustrating it wonderfully as you always do, but one of the exec producers said to me that we we with the three of us illustrate things so brilliantly, and perhaps we need to now give ideas of how individually we're trying to deal with it and maybe discuss and offer opportunities for people to discuss because clearly from what you two are saying. We are left to our own devices. You are going to have to look after your mum, Curtis. You're going to have to look after your fa family, Angie. We are going to have to do it. So, so let me ask you, Angie, what sorts of things are you doing? I don't know. Maybe you're eating a particular type of food. Maybe you're going out. Maybe you're wearing the mask, two masks. Maybe you're wearing gloves. But what sorts of things are you doing? I'm still in my lockdown mindset. I'm still staying in that zone, which is if, if I'm going outside, I am protecting myself. I am making sure I'm, I'm isolating. I'm not letting a lot of people come into my house. I'm not trying to act as though it's not there because sometimes when you walk out, you think there isn't really a virus, is there? Because people are just in the shops and like somebody will start talking to me and I find myself like going, like, go away, go away, go away, Satan, move away from me. But, you know, you just... And you think that maybe people are just not aware of it. So I'm still acting as like I'm, I've got to look after myself. So every time I see what the government is saying, I don't really listen to them and believe them. I just say, I'm going to take the year off and right. think shut down for the whole year. Think wow. how I can manage my life in that place. And I look think up. you're right. The problem is, the yeah, yeah, I think you're right, Angie. I think that's what everybody's doing. But Curtis, that's why I mm. think that we're in serious trouble because we are not experts and because of a lack of trust or whatever it might be we're all making it up now angie you might wash your hands curtis you might not let anybody in but somebody else might interpret it as actually they haven't got it because they don't look like they've got it they and yeah, they're yeah. in like 
madness, doesn't it, Curtis? Because yeah, I know well, unfortunately, it's because of how more careful than I was, you yeah, didn't do any. Yeah, I, I was extremely careful and, and, and very much on it, um, as I've stated before, with old people in the house as well. Now, we're of a different age range, so Angie can, and we can say, oh, we're going to lock down. But then you look at society, Eddie, you've still got children at um, secondary school now, and, and you have to be in the system. Your children have to go to school. Do you know what I mean? So for us, it changes. I don't know what we do across the board other than a lockdown. And economically, it's disastrous. Um, for unemployment, it's disastrous. But that is the only way that it can be dealt with, a universal, across-the-board lockdown and okay. making testing centres available somewhere near where you live, rather yeah. than stories that have been going out where people have to travel halfway across the world to get a test. And if they mm. are positive, they've carried that all the way to the test centre. Do you Because people are hearing people getting a post from London, getting a postcode at Scotland in order to qualify to get a test in London, which I find yeah. ridiculous. So if me and you and Andy were in charge of this thing, I dare say we would have a lot more test centres. And as Andy stated, not all of them privately run, not all of them about how much money can we make out of this crisis. And that is the thing that's holding it up. And that is the expose that will come after um, God, uh, God willing, after this um, pandemic, how many people got rich out of exploiting our insecurities, our nervousness, and how many companies that have shareholders that are all MPs got rich out of this? That would be the expose right, so, that okay, I would so, love to see. Okay, so so let me just take from that. Please look after yourself, guys. It might mm. not kill you, but it might kill somebody in your family. It might not affect you. I think there is a balance being made now between health and wealth and the balance between our health and the economy. Mm. Uh, but right now, we're going to have to do whatever we can to stay safe. So please be careful, whatever that means to you. I'm not God. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your life, but I prefer you to be uh, one of the people watching this show because it, it helps our credits, doesn't it? So, look, um, get the messages in. Tell other people what you're doing. Tell them what ideas you've got. Uh, we really, really do appreciate that. And um, Curtis used the word expose there. Now, look, we, Curtis and Angie, have had a few conversations. Now, I've got to be honest with you, they weren't nice conversations about this next one. So we are of the people, right? And one of the things that we love is that we can talk about things that people see around them as opposed to what anybody thinks that we see. Now, we've all been sent a video about what's happening in Tooting Market. In fact, I've watched all the videos and I've watched them more than once. I've tried to make sense from something that to me doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It came up yeah, last week and we all congratulated a lady called uh, Donna Spence. Uh, he's a comedian, a healthy eating advocate and now an undercover reporter. <laughs> so we, <laughs> We've invited Donna on to the show to tell us why so many people got involved and why this thing went viral. So Donna Spence. Hello. Hello, Hello everybody. Oh, hey, hey, Donna. Hi. Angie. Hi, Donna. Oh, sorry. Hi, Hello. guys. How you doing? Eddie. Right. You look no. amazing, Eddie. No, I no, 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 no. I haven't even shown. No, We're going to get you to get some vegan food. food. My what, Eddie? Diversity. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and you lift, lift it up, Angie. Lift it up. No, no, okay, look, look. Let, let's get to it. Look, so I'm I'm going to tell you the story as I understand it to a point, and I'm going to show sure. a video, and then we'll work it back, yeah? No so there's Tooting Market. There are two black guys who say the police came, and the police raided, and when they raided, they told them they needed to leave the market. One of them, we know quite well, some of us who know about music, Huey Crawford. Uh, Huey's recovering from prostate cancer, also a bad back, said he had a couple of ounces of weed there. Uh, and and it went viral. Everybody got the video. Everybody said, Eddie, you got to do something like this. <laughs> Curtis and Angie clearly got the same thing because we had a very interesting conversation about it. Um, and Donna, you're the person who filmed it, okay? So... It's past that point now. I want to go back, but I need you lot to know why we're talking to Donna. Here was Huey Crawford's last post. 
Hi Scrubs of London, um, someone has just pointed out to me that um, I've just seen what's on Scrubs of London platform that this has all been sorted, nothing sorted, it's only sorted for Chris, right, he decided to turn his back on me after I've done all the work to help me and him stay here, right, he decided to distance himself away from me, right, and so him and his partner, the white guy that he's got as his partner, he's distanced, they, they decided to distance themselves from me, right, nothing is sorted for me, I'm, I have to move out and he's staying, this is how it is so please don't think that what you've seen is true because it's not true i've been i've been given two weeks to get out of here right so i'd like you to share this everywhere so people know because i don't want people to stop supporting me right on the basis of what he's he's put out they've misconstrued it and made it look as if everything's sorted out between me and and me him and the landlord the landlord and him have, he's got a new contract and i've got no contract i've been told that i have to get out and he's can stay so that's the basis of what's going on right here. So please share it. I want people to know that this is not the truth. The truth is, um, the truth is not a sin. Yeah. So he's got a new contract and um, I've got no contract. That's where it's at. Um, I've got two weeks to leave here. That's from yesterday. Donna, hi. Welcome. Thank you. Um, thanks so much for, for agreeing to come on and talk to us. It's important, I think, because, uh, you know, it went viral. How did you come to the story? I basically walked, I'm very much into filming black businesses. So I've been doing it for a, for a while. So there's four black businesses in that particular part of the market. So anytime I pass, I kind of go and say hello. Mm -hmm. And I went in there and Huey said to me, did you hear what happened on Saturday? And I was like, no, what happened? So himself and Chris from The Lone Fisherman both told me what happened. So I said, let's film it. Let me just film you. And that's really what happened. I didn't think it was going to go viral. I didn't, I was surprised. I, I was surprised. I wasn't even going to put it on YouTube. It was going to go on WhatsApp. I just couldn't upload it. And God obviously wanted it on YouTube. And I was just, I was just surprised. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was overwhelmed that so many people cared. I had lawyers, I had press, I had everybody coming to me for to, to contact you know obviously well there's two sides of press isn't there there's the press that just wanted to speak to the lone fisherman and there's the press that wanted to speak to huey so there's two sides of press both sides the ones obviously they wanted to speak to chris obviously they wanted to make him uh be the a face of the market mm. Mm. sorry in, in a way a victim because if working on what he was just said there, it's resolved for, for Chris, right? Yes, but, in, in, you know, there's nothing I've not said to Huey. Huey needed to keep his mouth shut. He chat too much. That's the bottom line. He talked, 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 talked. I warned him how many times. Stop talking. He kept putting that video after video after video. The video was done. Chris done a smart thing. He kept his mouth shut. He why, actually... why, why, why did talking... As far as you're concerned, work out badly for Huey. Because, all right, there's things I can say, things I can't say, but you already admitted on camera you had two ounces of cannabis oil, which from his own admission. So already you're in kind of a doghouse kind of way. There's legal representation that was sent for you, whether you took it up or not, whether you've done the conversations or not. But had you kept quiet, Chris was trying to sort out him staying there, whether they believe it or not, because right. there's obviously a division between them, but he was trying to sort that out. And all he had to do was be quiet because Tootin Market, from my understanding, had a lot of press from a lot of heat. A lot of hate mail, hate, hate messages from all over the world saying, you know, you're wrong. Both black and white was doing it. So they were kind of like, oh my gosh, maybe we have done something wrong here. And they would have, um, I think they were looking to kind of go, okay, let's at least give Huey a year's probation or whatever. Because there's obviously there's other things behind the scenes that we don't know of. Yeah, no, no. Right. I, I accept that. So so is right. is is the market's main argument that by having this thing on the premises, you bring our place into disrepute? What what is their main argument? That was what they were saying at the time. Um and they argued that that wasn't the case, or sorry, Q argued that wasn't the case, you brought it to me. Um, but then obviously their mission of 
what he had on him, the cannabis oil, oil, not CBD, but cannabis oil, mm. then just went, okay, you know what, we're going to give you two more weeks. Because obviously the MP got involved as well. Um, and so now he, he has to go, and that's just it, as far as I know. Right, so um, the oil is a bit confusing because they're different. Yeah, is that legal or illegal? And, 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 and no. Basically, the, the CBD is, is legal, or to some extent it is. Certainly okay. you can get both types of oil if you know where to go. But but the cannabis oil, such as it is, is still. Although we make more of it in this country than anywhere else in the world, from my investigations, it's still illegal, Donna. That is that your understanding? My understanding is is that CBD oil. If you haven't gone to the health shop or haven't got a health uh, a health pass, a health you gotta have a health pass to have a CB, to right. use cannabis oil, right. CBD oil. Right. If you haven't got that, it's illegal. And two ounces is not personal. So the argument is, well, why did you have it in the shop? So there's all these things that, you know, are not necessarily um, correct. And, you you know, obviously the sniffer dog went and didn't find anything, but then obviously they went to search his home afterwards. But on a legal standpoint, I can't tell you what happened, but I can well, only he go did. You don't have to tell us. He did. He said they went correct. and they found pardoner money with yeah. it labelled. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've literally, because in order to do this, I have to watch a video, yeah. don't I? Sure. Because we have to know what we're talking about. I don't want mm -hmm. to misrepresent anybody. I, I want mm -hmm. I want it to be a positive outcome. I want to find out what happened. Uh, but, 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 but I don't know. I don't know. As, as a member of the public, I don't know Angie and Curtis. So, you know, whether we celebrate one guy being kept or what we do. But certainly, if, if something is illegal and it is found, then it is going to be a particular type of discussion to work out whether your bad back and your prostate cancer is a justification. And maybe for having it on the premises, for having it in the shop, is it a yeah. justification for having it in the shop? It's a hard one because I love Huey Crawford. I've known him many, many years, right. and you want to support, you want to rally, but is it is it something that people should be rallying around? In your opinion, Donna, how are you feeling about it? Personally, for me, I just done a video. That was that's how I saw it. I just done a video. And great bit of journalism it was, man. Strong so hands, again. strong hands, because my hand would have got tired long time. Oh, listen, I don't know how I done it. I think the injustice done it really. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I just think that I think that you're right. I think there's some things you support and some things you don't. And there was a lot of things that happened because Black Lives Matter came down there with a foghorn. People were like, like at the end of the video, you've heard me say, "What would you like us to do as the public, mm -hmm. as people? What would you like us to do?" And both of them had two different answers. People came down there, they're congregating like it's nine night outside. They're not, they're just, so, and all those things, if you're a market owner, let's be real, if you're a market owner, you see that, I don't want you here. Yeah. Because is money being spent? Are you just congregating? It, it, there's some things that don't look good. I'm not saying that they're Huey's fault, but what I'm saying is they wasn't stopped. And well, to be honest, we were celebrating that. We were celebrating the movement of people, the kind of, yeah, you know, the yeah, uprising with, yeah. We're, we're no, being effective, good. we're rallying, we're supporting. We were celebrating yeah. that fact last week. Yeah, no, and that's good. Sorry, and also, No, sorry. It's all right. I, th I think it's also to remember that, you know, cancer and um, um, the whole treatment of that as well needs to also be looked at as well because we don't understand what the needs were for him and how he functions with that. And I think that's the voice that I would like to also hear as well, because it just feels like, you know, we're just saying, you know, that you you done this wrong and we, we, we don't know. So we don't know how to support you. We still have to know how to support you, to support you legally, to work out what is right and what is wrong. Because the example that he's shown right now is that people may not be aware of certain oils and what you're supposed to have. And what you can't have, and what you well, need, what, what you don't what need, and what helps, helps. helps because we don't know what trauma goes, what people go through yeah. having cancer treatment. Right. So I, I would like to find out from himself what he and how he deals with that treatment. Well, he, he'll put out another he video. Support. He's put out a lot of videos, Angie. I am and, and absolutely that's positive. And, 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 and I think that's also frustration. You know, when no one's listening to you, and you feel like everybody's turning against you if you've done something wrong, it's almost as though 
advice needs to be given to him to be able to say, look, this is your situation now. Maybe you don't need to speak anymore. You need to seek legal yeah. advice because yeah. the information yeah. that you're given... Yeah. Yeah. I can't feel he was given that advice. Great point. Okay. No, he was. He was. He was. With yeah. that. Hold your tongue, yeah. hold your tongue. Let's see how it works. Yeah. Roll it out, hold your tongue. I know, but we can, we can, yeah, say, but to, can say to people, yeah. hold their tongue. But if you can't, you know, half the people that suffer in this in this world right now is because they don't have legal representation. It's oh, because yeah. they have no understanding of law. They have no sympathetic sympathy where it comes to what did I do wrong and how do I get myself out of it? So sometimes people scream and go, I no, don't know right. what more to say. And so that to me... That that feels true. like, and, a, a but that's why it's issues. on the show, Angie. If I'm honest with you, you're right. That that that's why that's why because it isn't normally the thing that we put on the show. It certainly isn't the sort of thing right. that I would normally go because there isn't a winner. It's not like I can yeah. help Huey. It's not like I, I, I don't want to do a show where I'm questioning his things. It's not like we mm. can do anything. But one of the things that we can do is just in the round, scary, difficult yeah. subjects is to tackle them. So yeah. Yeah. on that, this is you know Macmillan Cancer Week. This weekend, uh, the 28th, will be the, I don't know, what are we in, 2020 now, 30th anniversary of my last chemo treatment. But uh, I didn't want to put it on the show, too, because I know that we've, we've all, no, 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 I'm evil. I'm going to live forever, Curtis. I want to be <laughs> Well, oh, I, I didn't, uh, Curtis. I know you know your story with your father and your story, and I really didn't want to go there again because actually it, it 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 hurts. But it is a thing, and definitely mixed race wills and also uh, you know prostate cancer, particularly, and a subject that Angie will pick that speaks directly to women will be on the agenda in the last three shows uh, that we've got. Listen, Donna, thanks for coming. Could, could you just hang around? I mean, we nearly finished the show now. Love so to. Hang around. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yes, I'd love let's, to. Let's bring the boss on and find out what's been said uh, so far. Boss, lady. Hey. 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 Crowded studio in there today. Everybody's looking fabulous. <laughs> Lovely ladies. Looking oh, good. Thank you. Lovely Lovely. Ladies. Go thank girl. you. And the gentleman. <laughs> Good afternoon to the lovely listeners no, as well. You see that, Eddie? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Can, 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 we need to, we need to draw. We need to draw for our hat. Because let these people want to play the truth. Yeah, oh, man. man. That's how we're rocking it. If you lot can wear their people's hair, then we can put straw in our head as well. We paid for it, so. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> enough of that. Good afternoon to the lovely listeners. Thank you to all your messages. Please keep them coming through. Don't forget to like, hashtag and share. Um, a couple of messages reading out for you. Angela S. Wick says, Matt Hon Hancock is struggling with this. He's so weak. No one is listening. Uh, Michelle Benson, many people are agreeing with you, Angie. 14 day isolation for everyone. Pauline Gell says, it's nonsense. They should have been better prepared with the testing more than the PP equipment. And with regards to the Huey story, uh, Sam Richards says, divide and conquer. And Nika says, always two sides to a story, but sometimes you have to mind what you say as what your words will be used against you. And that's what many people are saying uh, in the comments. Please don't forget to like, hashtag and share. Also post your questions for Eddie, Angie and Curtis anything you like related to today's issues please make sure you start it with a star with a love heart so that i can Aww. pick those out because there's loads of comments coming in also your t-shirts we showed lots of pictures you can still get them yes curtis <laughs> 17.99 and Eddie, that's a nice one love that one and she uh, says she ain't wearing hers Liz. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get Angie to wear hers. Yes, Angie? Yay! <laughs> um, they're still available, $17.99. Link is in the bio. And big up to our donor this week, Bajakan Blessings. She designs flags. Please support her. Also, send in love to Jill Nichols, our original big-time sponsor. Please like her Facebook page. Hello, Don't forget to post your questions. See you in the 20, Lee. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Lisa. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, look, let's let's move on because we spent half an hour. We've got lots to do, and uh, you know we like finishing on time. So <clears throat> this week, um, twenty one thousand six hundred people complained about a dance, a dance which is why we're all here, which changed the world. The killing of a man in broad daylight by the police with people watching and not caring. It sparked mm. the Black Lives Matter. Uh, it's a thing that's made a lot of people feel incredibly uncomfortable. Uh, it's been discussed and discussed and discussed. The reason we're talking about it today is because Ofcom didn't even think there was anything worth investigating. Uh, but when we were at Jeremy Vine, they put the telly on and on the telly uh, was Good Morning Britain. And on Good Morning Britain, I don't know if you've seen this, Angie, but I think you might like it. A man with an afro who's apparently a social commentator oh. was asked what he thought about Black Lives Matter and diversity. Take a little listen to what he had to say. Stoking up racial, racial tensions where they didn't really exist to begin with. There are elements of racism in this country that we need to stamp out. But while we're seeing everything as racist, we're kind of undermining those actual racial issues that we need to address. And that's what BLM is all about. It's critical race theory. That's but why do I don't you believe, like believe, Calvin, in your heart, do you believe in this country tolerant though it is, certainly by comparison to many other countries, do you believe that there is genuine racial equality across the board for black people in this country? I think everyone has an equal opportunity to succeed in this country. Absolutely. It's a fantastic place to live, which is why I live here. You know, it's a great place. I don't think we need to kind of say it's a, it's a racist country or there's institutional racism or anything like that. There are elements of racism that we need to address. <laughs> I, just, yeah, I, I, I got, I got her with us. I'm asking people. people. I, it's the first time I've I edited that, and I didn't see the Union Jack order on "Make America Great." Uh, <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't see that before. Right, Angie, come on, because you got that face on. No, I mean I, I've never heard. Brother, first of all, and David Grant like he was in a problem. He wanted to literally jump through the table. Your thoughts? Uh, you know, what, where, where do we start? You know, and the, the, when I when I watched it, I felt I was looking at David Grant and I was thinking, "Ah, oh, poor you, bro." It's like watching Nana on on um, Jeremy Vine, where you just look at and think, "Where do they wheel these people out from?" Mm -hmm. You know. Everything that we're working for, I mean, if you took their script and you took Nana from the same program and you heard what they said and it was from a white person, you'd actually say to yourself, they're racist. Because mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is, it's like they find these people who maybe they have had a good life and they haven't experienced racism. But dare you say that nobody else has experienced it? Wow. Dare you say that people haven't got the right to protest? You know, I said it last week mm -hmm. about ITV. That dance could not have gone through unless ITV sanctioned it. And that's why they come out and they've said, you know, we stand by them. We stand by Ofcom. When they went to research, they realized that these ones look kind of suspicious, like people have been um, dog whistled to complain. So when they draw these people out to discredit us, to undermine everything we are standing for, to say what they can't say, because that's why they get them. Because I can't understand for the life of them why they don't shut up and just <coughs> let us have our voice and say something is wrong, it's unacceptable, yeah. and we want to do something about it. And there are some white actually, people, now just a minute, there are some white people who actually feel as strong as we feel Yes. as well. Yeah. And they, they want change. But the mm -hmm. voices of the people who are against us, like that guy, who is he? Where is he? What, what, you know, is Thank it, you. Is okay. it Cornwall? Is it Cornwall? <laughs> Watford. <laughs> Cardiff, I think it said on Watford. On, on, on this. Watford. It did say Watford. Watford. So that's that's really close. Donna, I mean, I don't know if you saw it, and certainly we didn't hear your views on it, but nothing, nothing to see here. <laughs> Jog on. What are your thoughts? I think he's an idiot. I mean, I don't know where he came from. It's like, and she said, where did he come mm. from? It's like, I think he's part of George Soros group, like the whole, you know, behind Black Lives Matter is George Soros, because I don't know where he came from. Like, it's not even like he said something before. Like, where do they find him? And I don't believe, like Angie said, like, yeah, he may not have suffered any racism, but exactly, how dare you? How dare you act like nobody else has? But David Grant, he done amazing on there. He responded, he answered, he put him in his place. I was like, I had to look at David and go, okay, 
It was mm. he was very yeah. very good. David is an interesting guy. I know him quite well, and um, yeah, you know, I, 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 him and his wife <laughs> Terry. I, 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 I keep getting asked by somebody if I would like to be in the pool of guests for that particular program. And every time they ask me, I say, no, but I've got to make call Curtis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it you making them phone me? That's right. And you're supposed oh, to wow. say thank you to me because you're Brock and I'm trying to Not give you really, a because <laughs> I wanted to say exactly what that guy said, but he stole my thunder. I wanted to say there is no racism in the world. I don't know why all black people are complaining. Just shut up and dance. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to hear from you. That's why I, but we would have repeated each other, I think. I have a feeling. When, when there's issues, they have these people somewhere. I think they keep them yeah. in a cell somewhere. In a cell. And just drag them out when they need that rhetoric to Get come out. from a person of colour. And they pull them out. Yeah, because nobody's ever heard of him before, and and guarantee you won't hear of him again unless he's got right. a book coming or something like that. It was you, so bad, you. it was hilarious. Yeah. And look Let at Piers Morgan. Again? Don't. Don't. I have to interrupt you to ask, that thing that I said last week, I, 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 sorry about repeating myself, but are we expecting now all black people to agree on all things? No, we don't no. agree right. on all things. But nobody's we're doing, saying that. But we, but we do expect us that now that we've got the platform to really talk about issues that have been going on for years, that we can sit down mm -hmm. and have a really honest conversation. Because yeah. this that guy will probably get a job head of diversity or somewhere like that. That's how they're, yeah, yeah. That's how they're yeah. using because yeah. they know people that you don't know who to frighten, as they say. And Amen. now we've got this conversation Amen. that is really, really open, really relaxed, really honest now. We don't want people to interrupt it and say, we're wasting our time, nothing to see here. There's a lot right. to see here and we want it fixed and we want to move forward. I think What's the most that? important thing on all of that for me is uh, if there isn't a problem, then how comes it is the most complained about thing on television this year? It tells you a lot that people, whether they saw it or not, felt invigorated enough, felt that these people had overstepped the mark, that they had risen above their status, that they had the temerity to do this thing. And mm. that, that, for me, is the, is the main thing. And on that, I could jump to a couple of different areas. Right? We're going to go to... Barbados it's all right, Donny. He, he ignores us all the time as well, okay, right, no worries. That's the way he is. <laughs> you invite her on, and then you just ignore her. She said, can I say speak. something? All right, okay. I'm just saying, um, I'm just saying, Eddie, that the same way you can buy people on Instagram is the same way you can buy people to, to go against Ofcom. That's the same way. It's no different. Well, well I, I accept that. Uh, but but if you no, go go and have a look at my Twitter line and how many people, you know, felt that, you know, myself and Ash were out of order to, to say shut up and dance and that right. it was something, it's a light entertainment program and there wasn't a place. And the truth is that, you know, a racist will never believe that there is an appropriate time or place to have an issue right. like that on. It's just the, it's just the, the way it is. So whilst you may be uh, right, certainly for me, it, it spoke to a real disconnect in what the image that we portray of this country and yes. the, the reality. Those people have become in, emboldened. Talking about emboldened. I, you're going to get 30 seconds each and I am going to blow the whistle on this one because I already know that the last time I mentioned Nigel Farage, Curtis phoned me up like he was going to fight me. This is not the this is not the platform for those types of voices. But Angie Lamar, why are so many people sending me that Jim Davison video? What, why do they believe that, you know, Jim Davison is a racist. It's not something that is a surprise to me. Like Jimmy Savile was a wrong one. It's not something that was a surprise right. to me. Or that, our, uh, you know, R. Kelly is a wrong one. We've known these things. They've been happening in plain sight all the time. Why are people spreading that kind of trauma? What is it about people that means that they're going to spread that? Angie, you first. I think it's because people can't believe that Jim Davison is allowed to get away with saying the things that he's been saying. They can't believe that somebody who has been held up in, in the, the, the British community is still allowed to absolutely call it how he wants to call it. And no one is actually saying anything about it. No one is cutting his Twitter. No one is cutting his um, social media. They're allowing him to speak. And I think people are sh um, sharing it because they're in shock that he who was on a mainstream platform, mainstream television, is so racist and getting away with it. And you didn't know he was racist, Angie. Is that what you're going to tell me? 
Well, so I, you didn't I, know the man who did the thing about Chalky and well, you didn't know said, he was racist. Who said I didn't know I was racist? I'm asking I, you a question. I, I, well, I'm telling you, I knew he was racist from the, from the get go. You, right. You're the one at school that was Chalky, Chalky, Chalky. How long was that going on for? Right. We've been telling people what was racism and they didn't hear us. Now that they want to say, what do you think's racist now? What, what is that racist? Uh, what can I say? What can I not say? <laughs> we, we, we've been telling you for a long time, but you still want him to be in the main well, he's, not. Thing, he's not he's not in the mainstream that's his own channel i also want to say that's the youtube channel. channel i also want to say that they keep using the fact that they want to get rid of some of their well-known um figures and replacing them they're using the fact that black lives matter is here that half these people have been sacked or been re re um, replaced they're Thank actually you. ready to go some of their careers are over and they're looking for new people but they're blaming black lives matter and i think that's unfair it's change has come and change is coming everywhere and people are looking for better and different things yeah i think i think that whatever change means is what they're coming uh, donna on that you know when I look at Jem Davison, I see a sad old man trying to remain relevant. relevant. But, but for, for me, I'm understanding trauma in a completely different way because of the way it's affected me. And I, I didn't watch the guy get shot seven times because I don't need to see it. Yeah. As a person who's invited onto this show because something you did went viral, what do you think about the sharing of, of, of particulars? Because to me, it's just a perpetuating the pain. I, I, just tell me your thoughts, please. You know, I, I agree. Angie said it perfect for me, but I, on what you're saying, Eddie, I, I got the Jim Davidson thing as well many times. I just deleted it. Because I already know he's racist. Why am I sharing? There's nothing he's going to say that has any interest to me. Like you said, he's just dying. He's hanging around dying. He's trying to... And people... And the question I really need to... I suppose is, are people really racist? And do people even understand what racism is? My thing is, why are we still asking for permission? Mm. Like, I feel like we have to care about what they think. I just want to get on and do what I need to do. I don't care what you think. Just mm. let's move on. As long as you don't touch me, we're cool. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right, but this podcast, this platform you're on, uh, Donna, and let me just put this to you, Curtis, is all about that. It, it's inspired because a man got killed. It's inspired through a pandemic, and we speak as close to the truth that we can speak yeah. as at any time in my I work on the BBC. I know they're watching it, and I know I have to be careful, and I'm not able to speak my truth in the way that you and Angie can, but we are speaking in a way perhaps we've never spoken before Curtis yes. and half the um, people wearing the t-shirts in the five minute more than half who bought the t-shirts for no joke are not actually black riddle me that Curtis I just it, it's important no matter what you want to say it's important you're allowed to say it so whereas um Mr Davidson has a platform on YouTube it's important I've always said I want to know my races we know that what heartened me um, yesterday, when I'm talking to younger people, they didn't have a clue who he was. And that is the future <laughs> of us and this country. We're, he, we're having him on the show for a certain generation. He was that vile comedian, along with um, Manning, Bernard Manning, those Bernard vile Manning. people who, who just spout it and get support, get their own TV shows with their, with their um, racism, mm. get their own following. And what Jim Davidson is doing in a time of Black Lives Matter he has an audience. He has an ear where people are rallied up and, and they're the same 21,000 that complain about diversity. That's yeah. his crowd. That's his core cool audience. He's never been so popular on YouTube, I'm that, sure. Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? No, no, no. no. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. That's why I, I was point. not for talking about him on the show because it's a waste of energy. And again, no, I, he will have black people supporting him as well. Probably the right. same guy who was on GMTV. Um, I think it was more about the spreading of stuff that's negative and what it does to your brain, your mindset and your spirit. Because, I mean, maybe I'm just going through a moment in my life, but, you know, I try to have positive people around me. I have people who, who lift my spirit because I need mm -hmm. it. Otherwise, I feel like you're getting dragged down. Let, keep your comments coming in because I really do want to hear your thoughts on but that. You, uh, you'd we'll be, be harmed by the fact that young people don't know who he is. Yes, and that is the yes, thing right. that we are yes, all striving yes. for. That yeah. Our children do not have to go through what we went through. They Absolutely. can celebrate their blackness, celebrate their culture, celebrate their independence. And that is what the future holds for them. 
and, and he'll and be because, dead soon because you guys are such fantastic <laughs> human beings. You, you help me. You help to link to the next bit, which is of course independence. And uh, this week, oh, by the way, before we get into this, I need to know from you three and everybody listening at home. I know that me and the boss aren't the only people who have nearly fallen out. We have had some of our best and most vicious arguments about <laughs> the lottery that we haven't won. <laughs> about the theory of winning the lottery and what you would do with the money. How can we fall out but passion? So uh, yeah, go on let it. your story ready, because I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. And you're going to see her in a minute. Proper arguments, you know. Till in, the end, in the end, I have to say to her, look, I'm going to give you your half. Your money. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the rest of your life. <laughs> Before I mess it up again. <laughs> Independence is where we go to next. Because um, Barbados has been in the headlines this yeah. week. And it's been fascinating. I've been to Barbados. It is Little England. It is the place that if you go mm -hmm. to watch a cricket match, there will be more English supporters than there are Bajan supporters. It mm -hmm. is a fascinating place. Take a look at what Barbados are about to do. With pageantry borrowed from its former colonial ruler, Barbados chose the opening of a new session of parliament to reveal its plan to sever links with the British monarchy. The announcement ironically read by the Governor-General, who is the Queen's representative on Barbados, though the words have been written by the island's Prime Minister. The time has come to fully leave our colonial past behind. Barbadians want a Barbadian head of state. This is the ultimate statement of confidence in who we are and what we are capable of achieving. By November next year, Barbados will have followed Trinidad and Tobago, Dominica and Guyana in no longer recognising the Queen as head of state. Dominica, 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 not Dominica. I might, I might ask. I'm on here with three people. Mm -hmm. um, there is a serious point to this. Uh, three people of Jamaican extraction. <laughs> no, no, mate, you, you lot are happy in that colonial place. You're happy <laughs> in that grateful <laughs> place. Don't try it. Don't <laughs> try it. Country. Country. Uh, okay, so let's start with you there, shall we? I mean, it, it is fascinating, isn't it? We talk, we talk about colonies and colonial kind of, you know, light-skinned people working in service industry jobs bleaching cream the legacy is there and all that we see and all that we hear a figure of state a good move an interesting move curtis your thoughts very interesting the timing of black lives matter everybody's getting it up in their feelings everybody's starting to value themselves and spread that what i think is left in the um in jamaica i know especially is the pageantry of it they put on their robes they dress like they're at the old bailey um, with the wigs and stuff, I, I, I'm I, happy for them if it happens because it's November, what they're planning for November. And mm. there's an economic blow mm. coming to every country with the tourism industry, which is massive in, um, in the uh, West Indies. And it, it'll be interesting to see what they're saying come November. But yeah, I think it's a great move. And I, I think every country needs to stand on its own at some point. And this um, colonial thing that has scarred many of us throughout our lives and was still on us, that slave mentality, it is a chance to really throw away the chains a little bit, you know, and just... Yeah, and I mean, I mean look, look, they have been independent for quite some time. So yeah. it's really, I think Jamaica still have the privy council. What, 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 what was interesting, Angie, for me on that one, uh, when you look at it is, you know, Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games. I think the head of the Commonwealth is uh, Baroness mm -hmm. Scotland, again, a Dominican, just to make that point. But, <laughs> but what, the Commonwealth, if you look at the Commonwealth, it, it, it is it is the colony. The head of it will always originate here. Britain, the, 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 the royal family will always go to the sport in events. Did, did, did anything good come from colonisation in your mind, Angie? Um, well, really, we... <laughs> What can I say? I think the thing is now is that there is a big repercussion. You know, there is a there will always be for a long time 
of lack of identity, self-understanding and awareness of who we really are and what we would have been had we not been interrupted. So now we can't go back, so we go forward. And I think Jamaica will follow suit eventually because what is happening in the economy and in the world is, is Brexit. Brexit is deciding that you can't really align yourself with England because England as a country now independently is going to be very weak. And when you talk about the Caribbean and the fact that we can sustain ourselves, eventually we're going to be able to be in a situation where we're going to get power amongst ourselves. We as the Caribbean can now trade with ourselves, trade with Africa. So we have to pull ourselves away and stand alone and be independent. And I think it's coming soon. I think Jamaica is a matter of pulling themselves together to get rid of that slave mentality of holding on and thinking that you're not associated with um, the, the queen, therefore you have no, 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 no greatness. And I think that's where we are now stepping forward. And this time right now is the best time to do it. I, yeah. I think what yeah. Barbados is uh, showing us how to do it, that's leading right. the way again. Dominica has done it, you know. Yeah. So, no, it, no, Guyana. Guyana. Uh, has mm -hmm. done it, Trinidad has done it, and Dominica. The and thing still about, doing well and, yeah, and living yeah, happily. I think the thing, Donna, I, I've got another one of those videos. Where, you know, it might be something for me to take a look at, which effectively said that uh, not just the Caribbean, but in Africa, £600 billion pounds or £60 billion pounds has been spent on birth control throughout the continent of Africa, that throughout... Africa and the Caribbean, the Chinese are buying up everywhere. Not only are they buying it up, but they're bringing Chinese workers to do to do to do the work to own the land. To own the land. <clears throat> Even though we are in a moment, the legacy and the new form of ownership and slavery is still around us, isn't it, Donna? Yes, it is. It's still there. I mean, I think there's things that are going on behind the scenes, and they're letting us put things in forward like Corona and all these other things. And, you know, Barbados is going to be independent. You've got the elections. They're doing all these things. But what's going on behind the scenes? They're taking over the countries. And when you're talking about birth control pills, for example, slightly moving off, birth control pills cause so many problems, hence why black women suffer with fibroids. You know, we could go on about the things that, it ha that happens to us to get ill, brings on cancers. Lots of things happen. So they know what they're doing, why they're doing it. Because if you look mm. at our countries, if you're looking at Africa, they don't get as ill as we would here. So there's lots. They know why they're doing what they're doing. And it's to take us off. There's an agenda going on, in my opinion. And also we need to be thoughtful of the, the economic debt that Correct. a lot of the Correct. islands are in. Correct. We're, when we're talking about us trading with each other, you can't mm. do that right now because... You have to buy your, even though you're Jamaican, you can't sell your own bananas. You have to buy your bananas Correct. in. Yeah. There are some ridiculous so. things going on behind the scenes, as um, Donna just said. There's I, some ridiculous I, I think, things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think years ago, Mozambique used to um, export rice, and now the Chinese have taken over yeah. many of the farms, uh, and they're having exactly. to import it from. So I, I get that, and you know, there were all sorts of conspiracies about why Colonel Gaddafi was killed. He tried to create an yeah. African currency yeah. that yeah. was dis supposed to measure oil, which is measured in dollars. Gold. Um, but you, you, you know, yeah. look, 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 let's look at the time. You guys, why don't you stop talking? Why do you not talk so much? It's a great show. Let's, 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 I thought you were going to help. You've made it worse. <laughs> let, let, it's let, a great let, show. You won't be invited back. Um, let's let's say that. The next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you have to treat people like family, you know. You can't be nice. People are, in my life, the people have been rude. How are you feeling today, Eddie? Are you? Those are the people who really don't like me. The people that tell me, shut up, are the people who love me. Maybe it maybe it's me, but that's what I've learned. Um, boss lady, where are oh, thou? Man. I am here. Hello right. again. Right. We're, late. Right. We're, late. We're, we're late. What are people saying? Well, lots of comments. Uh, Amanda Perry says, with regards um, to the guy that said there's no racism in this country, next time the police stop him, let him remember his words. Okay. Norman Robb says he's Britain's answer to Candice Owens. And a really funny one from John <laughs> O'Henry says, how dare he wear an afro? 
<laughs> he wouldn't get it over the. He wouldn't get the baseball cap over the Afro. No, That's shave it off. Good. Shave it off. Yeah, yeah. With regards to Jim Davidson, John R. Henry says, "I keep on saying, stop tiptoeing around the racist, racist, and stop accommodating them, and stop circling the videos and giving them life. Cut it dead." Um, Chiba Montserrat says, "Jim Davidson embraces uh, embraces that being racist." gets him the attention he craves. He's a has-been. And right. Angela Estwick says, well done, Barbados. Time for all the Caribbean islands to follow. And just, mm -hmm. I've, I've not seen this one, but there's lots of people giving a big up to Miss Alicia Dixon. Apparently last night, yeah. she wore yeah. a Black Lives yes. Matter chain in a gold capital. So yes. everybody's digging her up. Check that yeah. out. I haven't it's seen fair. it. Yeah, yeah. Teddy, Teddy doesn't go in our house, but 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 just be, <laughs> just before just before you go, I hope you don't mind me asking. But I'm interested. Um, there's a video that we're going to show in a little while, and before I get everybody's opinion, I'm just fascinated in yours, boss lady. Um, if if <laughs> if you won the if you won the lottery, if you won the lottery, what would you do with the lottery money? Well, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks oh, very much. Tell us. Bye bye. Tell us. Have a good day. Bye bye. 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 Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. But ha have a look at this. And courtesy of another of our exec producers, Ord Henry, uh, he sent me this last week because he thought Angie might have some interesting things to say. Take a look at this. <laughs> a Jamaican man does not want anyone to know he's a millionaire. And here's what he did. He won the Super Lotto in his home country and wore the mask here from the horror movie Scream to claim his $158.4 million. That is hysterical. You know, the man who simply identified himself as a Campbell waited 54 days to claim the ticket. Those who wear masks, you know, fear they will be recognized and harassed on the streets. Are you and uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. this is perfect. Look at that. He's got gloves on. It's perfect. That is hysterical. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, I don't blame him. No, because you know, have family members that come out the woodwork. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, no way friends. down the line. Right. Uh, that, that, right. That is, yeah. it's, isn't that a fantastic story? Okay, Angie, I'm going to start with you because, again, you know, when you're editing, you don't see things, but I'm looking at it like you know, Angie. I, I get the mask, right? Even though it's funny as hell. Yeah. Why the why the gloves, Angie? <laughs> because people can know people's hands, yeah. Yeah, I understand. If you got family, right? The minute you win money, <laughs> you're gonna have family calling you up saying, "I don't right. remember, no, remember, but your father on your mother's side, <laughs> his cousin is my uncle's sister, daughter." Yeah. And he, yeah. and so he's clever. He understands. Totally. He knows totally. that he's Take it does sound me. It go. does sound me. Angie, come on. I know that you like doing this <laughs> royal, wholesome thing, but don't pretend that in your house you haven't won the lottery. What have you done with the money, Angie? <laughs> well, first of, all, after, <laughs> first of all, after we bought a couple of islands, right? I, I said, correct. And a couple of nice little things. I've all, oh, you know, what I've wanted to do. Is buy up a whole heap of theaters. No, nice. I, would, I would buy a whole heap of theaters. How much have you won, Angie? I've won. I've won. Well, I'm nearly a billionaire to the amount. All right, so you won a whole heap. So, right. so you're so not I even just a one. million. Angie's taking it somewhere. I've got a billion because the, the list got million. too quick. A million's not a lot right now, but I definitely, if it was twenty million, definitely a couple of schools, definitely a couple of theaters and ownership, and then I could sit back and go, yeah, we've got this. That would be my heart. Mm -hmm. Curtis, what are you doing with if, the money? And don't, don't muck about because we've got to have a couple of cars. Be, huh? We've got to buy a couple of cars, haven't we? Not me, not me. I would donate the money to Angie to help her with her schools. Yeah? <laughs> That's what I would do, Eddie. <laughs> and it's so okay. true when you actually sit down, when you buy your lottery ticket, you do. You sit down and having big conversations with people about what you would do with it until it becomes real in your head. 
and you wake up with Brock as you went to sleep, and it is so annoying. <laughs> real. Uh, 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 I don't, I don't know your status, Donna, but who are you giving money to out of your winnings? Uh, see this charity thing. Mm. There would be some charities, maybe abroad, maybe like, but I definitely buy in Africa. I want a house in Rwanda, a house in Gambia, and a health retreat. And then you know, there comes the nieces and whoever else. Those kind you of look, stuff. You look odd. You look odd. Just disgusting. Like, you lying. Eddie, Eddie, what would you do, sir? Tell me what you do with your what winnings. Would you do? Well, I've got a couple of charities called my brother Stephen, my brother Gavin. <laughs> did that would have to get something right. Of course. Then I think, yeah. you know, Mrs. Nesta, the boss, would decide what we did with the rest of the money. Because okay. I wouldn't of be course. able to decide it on my own, would I? But if I were on what my own, do? I'm going to live life. I'm going to get on a plane. I'm going to get 30 of my brethren and we're going to go and have a pie. Yeah. You're going to buy the, more brethren. <laughs> Can you wake up 30 brethren? Why are you showing up yourself? You've got two no, people who, no, who no, like you. Back, you got 30. Six. Like you've got 30 brethren. Tell it. Rules of six, Eddie. He stood back. We had a birthday party once. Only five people turned up. <laughs> is that why you're okay? Is that, is that how we're going to end this thing? Yeah, that's it. Back, 30 yeah. brethren. Donna. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank, Thank you for you what for you did. Highlight, highlighting the, injustice, right? Is it back on the circuit? Was it? Please, back and on I'm, the circuit. Back yeah. on the circuit. Oh my gosh! Come on, Donna. We need a circuit. Thank you. Is there a is circuit it? anymore? Yes, there is a circuit. There's always been a circuit. <laughs> We do. Going, Donna. Thank you very much. God bless Thank you. Thank you for having appreciate, me. It's a, great, appreciate it. it's a great show. The numbers are going up. Keep going. Don't give up. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I've you might you. need to go to Angie's house and film her like you filmed you. <laughs> yeah, Donna, you're ready to meet. We're ready to meet up. Yeah. We need to meet up. Yeah, We're yeah. gonna meet up anyway. Yeah, yeah, we didn't hear let Angie talk today. I'm so happy. Take it easy, Donna. Look after yourself. <laughs> Thank you very well much. Well done, guys. You did well today. No, no, you no. Do tablet. not ta you need to get that t-shirt on next week. Otherwise, I feel like I've got pictures of strangers wearing our t-shirts and not a few post people. It? Is, it, is it hard to post something now? I don't know. Is are they on strike? Curtis. <laughs> So, Curtis, Curtis, yeah. I'm giving stop. Okay. Get the t -shirt Can Angie. Angie have a t shirt? Do I have to get the t shirt to her? It's we'll my t shirt. It You've it's, got yeah. my t shirt. Okay. She's got a point. She's got a point, Kurt. All right. I'll come around in a minute. Meet me in Lewisham. <laughs> no, you can't get there with the low traffic networks, boy. You can't drive you anywhere can't now. You can't You're going to have to get on a skateboard. Get, would your dog be like it? Post one. It'll be there by Sunday. Post one. Okay. Me? Hold on a minute. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Angie. God bless both of you. You are fantastic human beings, no matter what anybody says. Shut your mouth. I thought I'd go. I just to drink. Go on. Cut the camera, bro. Okay. So, uh, listen, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. I laugh sometimes something heavy. Spread the word. One o'clock. Next week's the fourth of six uh, we're trying something special for the last one so you'll have to be with us uh, you can get the t-shirt uh, buy it take a picture a lovely picture and then we'll put it in our five minute uh, opener okay i'm going to be on here tonight on uh, my facebook page playing some music i should have been on holiday in something called soul village and we've been playing some music and I, but you need a drink yeah, don't be coming there because it isn't like this. It isn't serious. It'll be a bit of fun. Special thanks to the whole team, kind of Steph uh, and to Fiona uh, and to Naya for helping us. And particular thanks to the boss. Can't do anything but uh, uh, the boss. Look after yourself. Have yourself a fantastic weekend. And God spare our lives. We'll be back here next Sunday at one with no, to no joke. Hashtag no joke.